Hey there, rugby fans, footy fans. It's time to have a bit more footy fun with Footy Finn. And uh, very briefly, the Brisbane Broncos are into the NRL final. The Brisbane Lions are into the AFL final. Um, and uh, the NRL women's semis are on today featuring the Broncos as well as others. But this one is about the Rugby World Cup. And uh, round three... New hat, by the way, just trying to get the um, right amount of shade on my face. Um, round three and the do or die clash between the Wallabies and Wales, which happens at 5 a.m. Monday morning, Australian Eastern time. Uh, but um, with the Irish jersey here and them being my uh, second team in this World Cup, um, I just have to make comment that um, there was a blockbuster clash overnight, late Saturday night European time, between Ireland and South Africa. It lived up to its billing. Um, it was a monumental clash. Ireland came away the victors, 13 points to eight. Um, the Springboks did miss a few kicks at goal. Um, but look, many are saying these two are clearly uh, by a long way the, um, the best two teams at the World Cup and may end up clashing in the final ultimately. Time will tell. Of course, France um, have a, 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 an injury to their captain and talisman Antoine Dupont. He's undergone uh, facial surgery and they hope he will be back for the knockout stages. Uh, but anyhow, look, uh, this is do or die for the Wallabies. Uh, they face Wales. It's, it's really a must-win clash probably for both teams, you would say, uh, but particularly for the Wallabies. And even a win over Wales does not guarantee that they'll get out of the pool stage and into the quarterfinals. They still need other results to go their way, and they need bonus points, of course, you get a bonus point for scoring four tries or more, uh, whether you win or lose. And if you lose by seven points or less, you, you also get a bonus point. So Fiji got two bonus points despite losing the Wales. Um, so look, anything can happen. But um, before I go into this match, just want to go back over a bit of World Cup history um, and other recent history between these two teams and nations. Now, the last time the two clashed was last November in Cardiff and Wales. The Wallabies came from behind um, to score a memorable comeback victory in that game. I think the previous three clashes between the two teams were all won by Wales. Um, they would have predominantly been in Wales, I think. Uh, but look, in terms of World Cups, it's interesting because the two have clashed seven times over the past nine World Cups. Um, starting in 87, in the three versus four, the bronze medal playoff, Wales won. In 91, in a pool match, Australia won, 38-3. In 99, pool match, no, I think 99, might have been a quarter final. Australia won, 24-9. 07, <coughs> Australia won, 32-20. 2011 in New Zealand, again a three verse four or bronze medal playoff, Australia won. 2015 pool match, I believe it was, Australia won. And then in 2019 in Japan, a pool match, Wales won that one, just 29 to 25, bit of a close match. Um, Karevi got uh, sinbinned, I think, um, for um, uh, charging into a tackler. Elbow first. Um, so anyway, seven clashes in nine World Cups. The Wallabies have won five of those seven, but Wales won the most recent one. And over the last four clashes, as I say, Wales have won three out of four. Um, so interesting times here leading into this one. Now the Wallabies have suffered injuries and uh, as they did against Fiji, they're missing two key forwards, two man mountains, their captain Will Skelton and prop Taniella Tupo. They both have soft tissue injuries, calves and hammies or quads, that sort of thing. Um, so they will be sorely missed because uh, they are bohemoths, both of them, 
They bring a lot of size and a lot of power to the Australian team, a lot of go forward. Um, so they will be sorely missed. And, and questions are being asked uh, of Coach Eddie Jones and his training policies and the fact that um, why are these players being pushed so hard in training and coming up with soft tissue injuries. And um, also if we look at the likes of uh, Michael Hooper who missed this um, World Cup, their ex-captain, also with the soft tissue injury, it's very interesting. Now in terms of the captaincy, um, hooker Dave Parecki is the Wallabies captain. Um, I believe the Wallabies have had um, now six captains in seven games. Interestingly, Vice Captain Tate McDermott doesn't take the captaincy. He returns to the scrum half position um, after uh, missing the last game due to concussion protocols. So really, looking at the back line, um, we, we have some changes. Uh, ben Donaldson, who started at fullback, uh, replaces Carter Gordon as starting fly half or 5'8". So a totally new halves combo. Um, compared to the last game, and I don't think these two, uh, McDermott and Donaldson, have started together in a test. And then uh, Callaway comes in, Andrew Callaway comes in at fullback for his first Rugby World Cup game. Of course, he's um, done very well in internationals in recent years, including Bledisloe Cups, etc. It's a bit of a surprise he hasn't yet appeared at this Rugby World Cup, uh, but this presents an opportunity for him. Um, to, um, to stake his claim on the number 15 jersey. Um, so interesting times. Uh, Wales were a bit lucky against Fiji. They got a lot of the rub of the green, a lot of um, um, uh, ref calls went their way. They, they had a lot of offside play that wasn't pinged. If you look at, there's a great video on a channel called TAS analytics, Taz analytics, check that out um, and you'll see just how lucky Wales were. Um, of course, bonus points are going to be crucial and a bit of late mail, Eddie, Wallabies coach Eddie Jones, who is under fire, um, it's just been revealed that apparently he did a video conference interview for the Japan head coaching role from Paris uh, just uh, about a week before the start of the tournament. So that is a bit of a scandal that's going to rock the Wallabies. Anyway, look, it's do or die, must win, bring it on. Um, I hope the Wallabies can win, but I'm not overly confident. Let's wait and see. Until next time, catch you on the bottom of a ruck. See ya.